Welcome back to the IAA show in Messe, München. But it's time to take a step away from the suit and have a look at the real stuff, EMTB Tech. It's pretty funny, uh, I'm in my t-shirt and shorts here and everybody else, I swear to God, is in suits in the motor part of the hall. Now I can hear on the microphone in the background, everybody's talking about efficiencies of motors. And then you come to this stand here, and I mean, just look at the size of this stuff. Mental. New bros? Hercules from Northern Germany. Not a brand we get to see that often on EMBN. And as my colleague behind the lens pointed out, one of the strongest names in mountain biking. But we'll leave that one with you. So what have we got here then? Well, we've got 29, 27.5, 150 mil travel. Very nice paintwork. I'd say it's a kind of British racing green. But there's some important detail on this bike, uh, beginning with the levers. Now, they're not the mountain bike levers, they're the commuter levers. Uh, the grips are the ones with the platform on, on them. And the seat is a Cell Royale, which I've seen quite a lot on bikes, both here and also at the Eurobike show. Now, there is a reason for that, and that's because this frame is a platform they use both on the mountain bike and also on the commuter bikes. So as you can see here, we've got some mountain bolts on the head tube, mountain bolts on the seat stay and also down on the chain stay. So let's have a look now at uh, the, the commuter bike to show you just why that is. So here's the, uh, the NOSFS. This is now the commuter bike and as you can see, they've now attached a uh, holder up front and one on back. So I'm thinking it's a great idea because you can actually transform your bike into a bike packing bike which would be very cool and there's also a few other details which I've seen on this bike now and that is the smaller Shimano controller and also a Shimano head unit which I've not seen before uh, on e-mountain bikes. I think possibly the hot ticket from uh, the IAA show is the Raymond Trail Ray. Now this all new bike featuring the new Yamaha PWX3 motor uh, comes in at 6,499 euros. And when you consider what it offers, it's pretty amazing. An 830 watt hour battery, uh, 29 inch wheels front and rear. It's an al uh, aluminium frame, 160 mil travel and some really good kit on it. Now some detail about the new PWX3. Uh, it goes from 80 to 85 newton meters. It retains the same Eco, Eco Plus, standard, high and extra power modes, but it's a far more compact unit on this. It's now 2.7 kilos and because it's been reduced in size, it gives you more ground clearance, which is really, really important for an e-mountain bike. I can see on the bike, it's got a really cool integrated bash guard there. Uh, and overall, I think that is a stunning, stunning looking bike. The Air Ray from Raymond is actually a very, very unique bike. It features the 50 Nm air drive Yamaha motor, uh, which weighs in the 2.9 kilos, but uh, in the down tube of that bike is a 410 watt hour battery, which means that the bike actually comes in at under 20 kilos. So it's not one of those bikes which is super low power to give you more range. It's actually a good compromise. It sits right in the middle. Now we're going to have a look at the heart of the bike, which is that Yamaha air drive motor. That They've combined the air drive Yamaha motor with the all new Yamaha PWX3 controls. So as you can see here, it's got a very low profile um, uh, LED controller matched with the display which has all those modes from the previous PWX2, which is Eco, Eco Plus, Standard, High and Extra Power. There's often a lot of chat uh, on the channel about 25 kilometers an hour not being fast enough, especially for those transition stages. Well, why not get a speed pedelec? This is a, a recent Muller. Uh, it's a full suspension version uh, of their commuting bike. Uh, it's a speed pedelec, remember that's 45 kilometers an hour. Obviously you've got to register that. Now, I understand it's a little bit easier to register these bikes in Germany rather than it is in the UK. But nevertheless, some very, very cool features on here. Uh, Bosch Performance CX motor, 625 watt hour battery in the down tube and a spare 500 up front. But obviously, there's a few other things uh, linked to this bike. We have got uh, some high beam, low beam lights. I mean, why can't we have those on e-mountain bikes? It's such a cool feature. We've got some tail lights on here. Rear brake lights, pretty cool. <laughs> Racks, I mean, I mean, if I was traveling to work, I would seriously consider getting one of these bikes.
Nice bit of integration from Swiss brand Stroma. They've even got integrated ABS on this bike. Uh, 850 watt hour battery, uh, some Welsh tyres from Pirathli, uh, and uh, some really cool integration, particularly on the top tube area there. Uh, integrated light, integrated stem, and a seat which goes up and down. Now this is a red Mercedes GT 63 S AMG and I will guarantee you it'll be stuck in the same traffic jam as the Peugeot 106. You'd think that some people would put the effort into uh, washing some of their bikes when you at a show like this. Uh, but guys, this is the dream, isn't it? Less or very little. Uh, maintenance or lubing on your drive. This is the Gates Carbon Drive. Uh, it's mounted to a Nikolai bike here with a pinion gearbox. Um, but we're increasingly seeing at this show a lot of uh, the belt drives on bikes and also a lot of city commuter bikes, obviously. Um, now, Gates manufactured first belts for Harley Davidson back in, well, do you know what? I'll find that out in a minute. But um, here is a Harley Davidson uh, street bike, belt drive. Bros motor, about 3,000 euros, and this is called the Mosh City. Nice looking bike, eh? But anyway, let's have a, let's have a chat now with the guys from Gates Drive to get a bit of history uh, of this brand. Uh, now, Gates has got an interesting history uh, coming from Mile High City, Denver in Colorado. Uh, it's your 100th year anniversary, right, Jonathan? 10 year birthday this year. Yeah, back in 1911. Gates thought about leather for tire treads, not so good. Let's replace it with rubber. So started out retreading tires for cars. And then in 1917, we invented the V-belt. Wow. Which you can find on almost every internal combustion engine car today. And then from there, we got into more and more belt technology. 1980, first time introducing belts to replace chains on motorcycles. And then almost 15 years ago, we brought this same technology from the motorcycle. We slimmed it down a little bit, put this center track inside, and, and then applied it to bicycles. And now you'll see at this show, IAA, you'll see many types of bicycles, e-bikes, almost any type of two-wheeler can be unchained. Can I just get something very clear? I, I've just said less or little maintenance. I mean, could you even go like zero maintenance with the gate drive? Well, if you take it on a really muddy trail like this, we would recommend you hose it down, get the dirt off, um, because you don't really want to be riding around with, with the, the dirt and, and debris. Um, and the weight. Pardon me? And the weight, I guess. And the weight, right, right. But, but really, that's all you need to do. Hose it down, uh, no need to lube it. Yeah, it's so much easier than chain. Uh, well, folks, uh, I don't know if you saw a couple of years ago, we actually rode the Nikolai uh, Gates Drive bike in Finale, and it was simply mind-blowing how, how efficient it was, and also quiet as well, I thought, yes. when we ride it. So, guys, check out the, uh, the Gates Drives on mountain bikes, and I think definitely a big future for the belt drive. Uh, it's really interesting that Munich police have actually got a fleet of e-mountain bikes. Um, and obviously, e-mountain bikes are going to be far easier when you're carrying a lot of kit. Now, Sebastian here has got four kilos on his belt with his cuffs, his baton, and his, and his gun. Uh, bulletproof vest, about five to six kilos as well. So, you know, not, uh, not light. I'm now joined by Peter, who is an Uber commissar uh, in Munich police. Um, Peter, what kind of bikes? You ride pedal Pedelec bikes, right? Yeah, that's right. It's uh, Pedelec bikes. It's not the Pedelec S, as you um, said. It's not the race bikes, but the Pedelecs, yeah. yeah. So do you get, is there many problems in Munich with people who are de-restricting and, and tuning their e-bikes and riding them on the street without any registration? It's almost uh, every third bike that it's tuned and uh, the colleagues, the experts, they know it and they can check it and they obviously then uh, make the other, uh, the next, uh, I don't know the word in English. Uh, the handcuffs. The next, uh, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever they have to do, yes. Okay, so you, you, you confiscate, you take the bikes away if they're not registered? That's one of the possibilities, yes, that's right. Okay, cool. uh, but obviously in Germany as a whole, there's a, there's a big expanding network of, of the police force using the e-bikes, right? That's 
the first bike or one of the new bikes in uh, Munich and this is one of the future things that we want to do that we have more bikes more e-bikes in the in the city center because it's a good thing you know yeah but I'm sure what Peter really wants is some of these Lamborghinis which are in the hall over here <laughs> Peter yeah, I never said it but yes maybe you're right <laughs> Peter thanks for joining us of course you might have seen the Cannondale Waves team tearing things up on the Motero Neo bikes, uh, headed up by uh, Josh Bryson, former World Cup downhill champion. Uh, some very cool colourways on this bike. Remember, there's the Bosch fourth generation motor in there. 29 uh, inch wheels uh, on these bikes. Remember, the longer travel bike has got a bigger fork up front. Cool looking bikes. Quickly harking back to my mountain bike days, now I think without doubt the coolest paint job on any mountain bike in Munich has got to be this Cannondale Jekyll. One of my colleagues at uh, GCN think, coolest paint job guys? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Uh, moving over something which is more their cup of tea, some gravel bikes. We've got a uh, hub drive gravel bike here coming in at uh, 3399 and also a Bosch equipped bike here with a lefty fork in it. Uh, you might have uh, heard me rattling on about the whole flex stiffness balance of e-mountain bikes. And a lot of the time you do see brands that have carbon frames with carbon wheels with carbon bar and stem and very often the bikes can actually be pretty fierce to ride. Now, if you'd ask me what one of my favorite wheels that I've ever ridden, uh, it's actually the zip wheels. Now this is a carbon wheel, but it's actually very difficult to explain. I think you need to bear in mind that it's not just the wheel on the bike. You need to think about the wheel and the frame and the suspension as part of that system. So in as much as I say it is one of my favorite wheels I've ridden, that's in the context of it being bolted to the right bike with the right suspension. Wow, IAA show, that was some show. Not just the e-bikes, but all the motor tech there, because it's important to recognize where e-bikes sit in the whole market. Now, it's a bit quiet out here, and that's because Angela Merkel is actually inside checking the e-bikes out. Apparently, she's gonna be on the Husqvarna stand in about 20 minutes, we need to get there. So, as you can see, there's snipers on the roof, but um, yeah, what a show.